Tannis and I looked for a hymn that would be of the tradition of Saskatchewan Conference. We found that hymn, and its author is in the court. We share our roots and wings in Christ. If you know the writer of the words to this hymn, or if you are, if you are the writer <laughs> of the words to this hymn, how about you stand at the second chorus? You don't want to leave him standing alone. with deep thanks to Walter Farguson. In just a moment or two, I'm going to invite us back into a table conversation where perhaps together we can reflect on our roots as the United Church in Saskatchewan Conference. You will want to add other deep and significant roots but I do not want to suggest only the easy conversation. You see, if you go to that lot on the south side of Aylesbury, where my grandfather's caraganas grow, it is now virtually impossible, virtually impossible to enter into what used to be the yard. The caraganas have grown through the gate the Karaganas have grown through what used to be the little driveway. You cannot get in to that lot to stand where my grandparents built their little home. I'd literally fight my way in. And should anyone ever wish to build for the future on that lot, some of those Karaganas need to be cut away. The reality is, and we're facing this reality dramatically at this conference and at our upcoming General Council, the reality is that sometimes our roots 
and sometimes our branches can become so entangled and twisted that the prospering plant becomes root bound. And a root bound plant left alone will die. Well, the, the analogy is not perfect, but you remember John 15. God breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And God prunes every branch that does not bear fruit so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. Here is the hard discussion that faces our church as we go to a general council in August. While we will celebrate all that is good about our roots, while we celebrate the roots that hold us close and keep us rooted, what are the roots that now are life-destroying? Where are the roots that have simply closed in upon us? Where are the roots that now encumber our ability to follow God's spirit? Now, not to put too fine a point on it, we had and have on some of our tables a yellow sheet with activities of our conference. Count them. 27 choices. How much is now encumbering us from the future that God would have us find? Which roots are those we must have the courage to let go of? Which roots shall we cling to? I'm going to leave you with that hard conversation. We'll watch the clock. Maybe we'll draw to close, get one or two comments, perhaps that you want to bring to the floor. Where do we need to prune? Where will we have the courage to prune? What are we willing in our roots to give up? I invite you into that conversation. Any observations about our roots? Any observations about the roots that are holding us back? Me? Number two. Hello, my name is Brenda Nickel. I serve St. Paul's uh, pastoral charge in Estevan. Um, I was sharing at our table when I have had this com uh, question in different settings. I always talk about our very Western roots in our parliamentary procedure as being something um, I'm curious about for the future of different possibilities. I think um, other, other cultures and even businesses and other nonprofits might have a lot to teach us about the decision-making process to make it more egalitarian, to make it more um, thinking about mission and less divisive as sharing about my uh, reluctance to ever have voting because it creates this side and that side and so um, as a church in the future how to have alternatives potentially for um, the way that we make decisions. Jim. Jim Tenford, Chinook Presbytery. Uh, whenever I start thinking about giving up something. I always think of the, 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 the passage in Mark where the, the man goes to Jesus and asks, what do, what do I need to do to be perfect? And in his case, he had a lot of possessions. And Jesus said, you have to give up all your possessions and then follow me because those possessions were holding him back. What is it? If, if Jesus were here now, what is the fill in the blank? Give up this and then follow me. Uh, Nora Vedras from Tamarack Presbytery. Uh, 14 years ago, I was ordained in Hamilton Conference. I know, it's terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've forgiven me, I think, right now. I, I know I'm still new. Uh, <laughs> And I was settled in Vertils Crystal Springs in Canistano, and I, was, I had done my internship in Indian Head, so I kind of knew the prairie shtick, but I was still kind of terrified to come. And uh, at that point, um, there was this kind of underlying assumption that if, if they settled you far away from Toronto, you were being punished. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Uh, and so, you know, I was kind of a little bit worried that that, that maybe was true. And I, I found myself standing in, um, in the book room and I was kind of looking through stuff and, and this fellow was across the table from me and looking at other books and he kind of said, you know, hello. And I'm like, hi, how are you? And he's like, good. And he's like, so you're new to, you've been to conference before? And I said, oh yeah, a number of times. He said, I'm actually in Ordnan this year. Oh, are you? That's, you know, do you mind if I ask her you're being settled? And I said, Birch Hills, Crystal Springs, Canistino in, in Saskatchewan. He said, oh, I'm in, I, I was settled in Saskatchewan. I said, oh, really, where? And he said, a place called Salt Coast. And I went, oh. I'm like, and you're who? And he's like, I'm Walter Parkinson. I'm like, oh. <laughs> 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 of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> and so I shared with him some of my, my concern and worry and, and, and this fear of beginning and, um, and he, he was, happened to be the keynote speaker, which also made it really embarrassing that I didn't recognize him. <laughs> but he preached at, at the ordination that year. And uh, I don't know if you remember this or not, but one, one line he said that I have never forgotten. He said, there are no perfect beginnings, only real ones. And so I think as we are moving into this time of change, we're not going to find the perfect beginning to this. There's no such thing. We just need to be brave enough to have a real beginning. To tackle that real beginning, uh, Tannis um, and Lindsay will um, lead us in a powerful, powerful prayer. A time comes when we can truly feel the wind of change. To know our roots and be strong, yet not to be bound by them. To know when to move and grow and expand and, and even release. Is this a time? Please share your voices in Come, O Holy Spirit, gifted to us by Fred Kahn and Ron Kiesmeyer. And I thank Lindsay Moore for helping share in Wind of Change. Come, O Holy Spirit, set the church on
See you tomorrow.